We stand closer than ever to delivering affordable, fiscally responsible health care for all the American people. Many have tried to disrupt this process, but the will for reform is too strong to be derailed. Just this week, the insurance lobby released a dishonest report on health care costs. The Consumer Union and many others quickly discredited this report as it deserved to be discredited. Who should be trusted on this issue? On what's in the best interests of consumers? The insurance industry, or an organization like Consumers Union that has been protecting consumers since 1936. That's a pretty clear, overwhelming vote for the Consumers Union. I'm now going to begin work with Chairman Baucus and Dodd and the White House to merge the help and finance bills. At the start of this process, I'd like to state where I stand. And remember I said where I stand. I believe that we must provide affordable health care for, American, for American families. I believe that we have to protect and strengthen Medicare, which we will do. I believe in a public option, but remember I said I do. I believe we have to rein in the insurance industry to place more focus on health care profits. I think we have to make sure that we focus on health care, not on health profits. I believe we must do all we can in a fiscally responsible manner that doesn't increase the deficit. But there's one thing that I don't believe in, the status quo. Preserving the status quo dooms millions of American families to a broken system where costs are spiraling out of control and more Americans are losing their coverage every day. Nevada is not a heavily populated state, but since I started the caucus over there just a short time ago, about 40 people in Nevada lost their health insurance. There are many competing views on how to best reform health care within my caucus and within the Senate generally and certainly within the House. I know Republicans will insist that we get 60 members to agree on a way forward. I know this isn't going to be easy, but I appeal to the Republicans in the Senate. Come join us. As the first invitation came by Senator Kennedy to the chairman of the Help Committee more than a year ago. And it continued until late last year. Come join us. We want health care reform. We want to do it with you. We're going to do it with them or without them. Neither I nor any other senator has the luxury of passing a perfect bill. I wish we could. It conforms exactly to his or her beliefs. But we must act and we will act to pass a bill that makes a positive difference in the lives of the American people. Senator Baucus. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, frankly, um, I'm really excited. Uh, we passed the Finance Committee bill. Now, Finance Committee, as well as Senator Dodd's bill, together. We're going to put them together, merge them together, and we are united. Uh, Senator Dodd, myself, Senator Reid, the White House, into getting good, solid health reform passed for the American people. And it's about time to control health care costs, because costs are so high in America, to prevent insurance company discrimination, which needs to be stopped, and to find more coverage, more health insurance for, for more Americans. Uh, we're united. We're all together. There may be some minor differences, but that's so, so small and pales in comparison with just how strongly we are working together. Sir Dodd, myself, the leader in the White House, listening to all senators to get a good, solid bill to get 60 votes. In a real sense, all senators who want health care reform are in the room. Because we'll be talking to all of them, they'll be talking to us. We're going to get a good, solid bill passed that addresses our objectives, that gets 60 votes, and I'll be so happy, the American people, I think, will be so happy when we finally get a bill off the Senate floor, in the conference and get a bill on the president's desk. The other side's for the status quo. The status quo is totally unacceptable. The status quo of continuing insurance discrimination, the status quo of letting health care costs 
rise at such an unconscionable rate and the status quo where people just don't have health insurance to deserve it. So I end where I started. This is a great day. I am really excited that we're going to get health care reform passed, and this is a step to help make that happen. Thank you. Chairman Dodd. Well, thank you, Leader. And let me begin by congratulating my colleague and friend, Max Baucus, and the members of the Finance Committee, along with Olympia Snow, for doing what I think the American public are anxious for us to do, and that is to get a job done, and that is to deal with an issue that confounds them every single day. In my state alone, uh, Leader, uh, this year alone, 28,000 people in the state of Connecticut have lost their health care because of unemployment. In the last nine years in my state, premium costs have gone from around $6,000 for a family of four to around $12,000 a year. In every indication, those numbers are going to keep going up. We all know the statistics in terms of outcomes and the like. We don't have a choice. I mean, this is something that we have to do. And it's a time for people here to put aside scoring political points and decide they're going to do something that affects, of course, 100 percent of our population, and that is get a health care bill done that increases access, reduces cost, and improves the quality of health care. There'll be four uh, people, uh, staff, gathering in a room, Senator Baucus, the leader, myself, the White House. There'll be a fifth person. Ted Kennedy will be in that room as well when we gather here in a few minutes and begin a process of melding these two bills together uh, to present to our colleagues. One half or less than one half of the Senate have had a chance now to vote directly on this effort. We're now going to give the other half of the United States Senate and the American people to watch a full debate on what needs to be done to improve the quality, accessibility, affordability of health care. Max Baucus has said it well. The leader has said it well. We are going to get this job done. Uh, this is a historical moment. It happens once. If we're fortunate, every generation where you can do something of such significance, it'll make such a difference for the future of our country. We have no other choice but to get this accomplished. And I would echo the leader's remarks. I urge our Republican colleagues to join us in this effort. This is a moment which you'll be able to tell your children, your grandchildren, about having made a difference for our country for years and years to come. Do not miss this opportunity to be a part of strengthening our nation for the 21st century. So we will accomplish this result, and I'm looking forward to this effort and confident and optimistic that the results will be a positive one for our country.